1979 was an inflection point for both popular music and for who, in the next decade, would become pop music's biggest star, Michael Jackson. It's hard to think back on that period now to a time before Michael Jackson became Michael Jackson, a world famous megastar whose work is so ubiquitous it's less like music and more like the air we breathe. But 1979 was before all that. It was before Thriller and Beat It and Billie Jean and Smooth Criminal. It was four years before the world first saw Jackson do the moonwalk on Motown 25. And critically for him at the time, it was 10 years after I Want You Back and the hits of the Jackson 5. In the intervening years, as Michael entered adolescence and outgrew the cute little boy that the world wanted him to be forever, he released four solo albums that tried to bridge the gap from his Motown roots to whatever was supposed to come next. The last of those, Forever Michael, failed to crack the top half of the Billboard 200. In the late 70s, Jackson's pop domination was far from a foregone conclusion, but behind the scenes, he was paying attention to the changing trends in music, and in the mid to late 70s, there was one trend that was growing faster than any other. In 1977, the disco subculture was juiced by an unlikely hit film, Saturday Night Fever. Of course, disco had been around for almost 10 years by then, growing out of soul and funk music and out of black, Latino, and LGBT cultures. Though, you wouldn't know it watching John Travolta dance to the Bee Gees for an all-white crowd. But a year later, Jackson and his brothers had a disco hit with Shake Your Body Down to the Ground, and at that point, the stage was set for what would become Michael's re-arrival as a showstopper solo artist. In August 79, Jackson released Off the Wall, the first of three partnerships with producer Quincy Jones. The first single off that album was Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, a song that Jackson wrote himself and co-produced, and his first number one in seven years. The song was a worldwide smash, one that still has legs 40 years later. I think it's been played at every wedding I've ever been to. For Jackson, it was the crossover hit that helped him turn a corner in his career. It was number one on the soul charts, but more importantly, it was a pop hit. It was inspired by disco and funk, but it was more than that. When we listen to the song now, it doesn't carry the historical baggage of disco. As music professor Ann Danielson says, in the popular imagination, Don't Stop is pure dance music. There are reasons for this beyond Jackson's undeniable charisma as a performer. That certainly plays a big part. But if you look closer at the musical DNA of Don't Stop, you can see why the song has such appeal. The first place to look is the rhythm, grounded by bass drum and bass guitar and richly layered with snare drum, shakers, guitar, and Jackson banging on a glass soda bottle. This is the part of the song that makes you want to dance. As Danielson notes, the rhythm is taking a lot of its cues from funk music, which emphasized the first beat in every measure of four, something that was made famous by James Brown. Now, this emphasis is one thing that makes the song more danceable. Another is syncopation, or something that disturbs the regular flow of the beat. Syncopation creates tension in music that you want to resolve with your body. In the case of funk, that syncopation can be very complex and very noticeable. But in Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, Jackson minimizes the distance between the beat and its syncopated sound, which comes only a handful of milliseconds before. Danielson calls this micro-rhythm. The beat still has funk, but it registers subconsciously, resulting in a cleaner feeling sound, something that attracts a mainstream pop audience. A cleaner sound is also a feature of disco, and Don't Stop's rhythm is incorporating those elements as well. The shaker, for example, is sounding consistent consistently every 16th note, and the main pulse, though emphasizing the first beat in every measure, is designed to combine the bass guitar and the bass drum to create the same sound every time, as opposed to funk or rock where you can mostly hear the difference between
between instruments. On top of this undercurrent of rhythm, which is balancing the features of funk and disco, Jackson spreads a tapestry of sounds that fill in the gaps between beats and help to smooth everything out, strings and horns and electric piano, again, reaching for that clean surface that defines the pop sensibility. The icing on the cake is the harmony and Jackson's falsetto. As Ethan Hine points out over at his blog, the song only has two chords, A and B, which alternate back and forth to create a trance-like modal groove, something more associated with Eastern music than Western. And above this, Jackson sings a melody marked by the first two notes in the first two syllables in every line. These notes are D sharp and A, and the interval between them is what's called a tritone. As Hein says, the relationship between these notes is somewhat off kilter and your mind notices that, and that infuses the song with an urgency that it wouldn't otherwise have. As I said before, Jackson's charisma here is unmistakable. This is where the world was introduced to the grunts and ticks that would become a signature of his style. Don't Stop is effectively the birth of a new artist, one who would take over the world in the decade to come. And this song goes a long way to explaining how and why that happened. You can see Jackson and Jones taking the syncopation of funk, the pulse of disco, the vibe of Eastern music, even the structure of a rock song with its verse, chorus, verse, chorus pattern, complete with a euphoric bridge by Greg Philling Gaines. Jackson recalibrates all these elements toward the end of pure pop music and electrifies them with the power of his voice. The song is greater than the sum of its parts. It's something new and exciting. It's the sound of Michael Jackson. Do you ever want to stop? No, don't stop till you get enough. And you have had enough. <laughs> no way, no way. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. So, I turned 30 on Saturday, which is just unbelievable to me. So this is the official first video of my 30s. I can't believe I'm saying that. And it was a great one to work on for the past few weeks, just because I got to jam out to Off the Wall for my birthday. Anyway, thanks again for watching. This episode was brought to you by Squarespace. If you want to make a website and you want it to be a really easy process, Squarespace has some beautiful award-winning designer templates to choose from that makes the process super simple. It's got 24-hour customer service, no upgrades, nothing to install, no patches ever, and picking your domain name is really, really easy too. You can start your free trial at squarespace.com and if you use the offer code NERDWRITER, you can get 10% off your first purchase. I'll see you guys next time.